Hello students. Today we will discuss the next session of the short question and answer. So the question one is, what is the cause of breathlessness, low blood pressure, sinuses following a sharp cut in the lower part of the neck? Now whenever you will read this question, you should always think about the injury of external jugular vein in the lower part of the neck. Now here you can see that whenever there is an injury in the lower part of the neck, it always causes the injury of external jugular vein. Now the external jugular vein, if injured at the point where it pierces the deep fascia, particularly the investing layer, there are chances that the atmospheric pressure or the atmospheric air sucks in the vein. Now why this uh, air sucks in? Because the wall of the vein is adherent to the deep fascia. Hence the lumen remains patent. So Whenever there is a intrathoracic pressure goes negative at the time of the inspiration, the vein is remain open and the air is also get sucked. Now this sucked air will cause the air embolism and this air embolism will lead to the breathlessness, low blood pressure and sinuses. Sometimes this air embolism also produces the churning sound and the splashing sound. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is the external jugular vein and this external jugular vein is going to open in your subclavian vein. But for the opening, it has to pierce the deep fascia and then and then only this uh, vein can go uh, from superficial to deep. So at this point, if the injury will take place, what will happen that the vein is remain open and it is not able to retract and whenever the intrathoracic pressure will go negative, the air sucked through this opening and it will lead to the formation of air embolism. Now the next question is, the supracondylar fracture of the humerus causes Wachmann's ischemic contracture or Wachmann's contracture. Why? So first you have to understand that whenever the supracondylar fracture of humerus occurs, there is an injury of lower part of the humerus just above the elbow joint. Now in this condition, the distal fragment of the humerus is pulled posteriorly because of the action of triceps muscle. Now what will happen in this uh, supracondylar fracture? There is a displacement of brachial artery may occur because you know brachial artery lies in front of the elbow joint in cubital fossa. Now, this uh, uh, displacement may lead to the compartmental syndrome of the forearm. Now, what is the compartment syndrome? Compartment syndrome results in the sign symptom caused by the increased pressure within the limited space. The space is limited as you know because of the arrangement of deep fascia. So, what will happen? This high pressure compromises the circulation and function of the tissue in the space. Clear? Now, this compartmental syndrome mainly affects the median nerve of the forearm and the anterior interosseous artery. So, this is the question of your exam. Now, what will happen that if this compartmental syndrome is remain untreated, then as a sequelae of this untreated compartmental syndrome, patient will develop Walkman's ischemic contracture because of the prolonged ischemia. And the now become insensible. The muscle is now replaced by the fibrous scar tissue. So the muscles become contracted and functionless. Now the important thing which you have to understand that there are two muscles which mainly involve flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus which are the deeply placed muscle in the forearm and it is characterized by the digits are characteristically flex and when the passive extension is done the deformity is worsened. Clear? So, in this diagram, you can see that these are the compartmental arrangement of your forearm and this is the uh, your brachial artery. So, when the fracture occurs at this point, what will happen? There is a stretching of the brachial artery and that will lead to the rupture of anterior interosseous artery here in the forearm. So, the leakage of blood will increase the pressure inside this anterior compartment of forearm and that will compress these deeply placed muscles which are the flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus. So, this is the important thing to understand and this is all for today's session. Thank you.